Hi and welcome to this series where I'm going through the ITIL 4 practices individually and I'll be giving you the main headline points you should be aware of in order to help you support your base knowledge around ITIL 4. I'll also discuss some of my real world applications of the various practices in the organisations I've worked in. Don't forget, please subscribe to my channel, like and click the bell for those updates. Okay, today I'm going to be covering off software development and management. This is from the technical management practice. There's three of them in there. You've got deployment management, infrastructure and platform management and software development management. I've done videos on deployment and infrastructure and platform management in a previous session. So please do have a look at those. So a reminder, what is a practice? So a practice is a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or for accomplishing an objective. The ITIL 4 book talks around the purpose of software development and it splits it out in, into sort of a number of um, uh, specific items. But the purpose of software development and management practice is to ensure that applications meet the internal and the external stakeholder needs in terms of and then here's the, there's a list of items and those items are functionality reliability maintainability compliance and audit ability so when we talk about software it's quite a, a, a generic term um, and it is quite a, a wide and broad term but that can be anything from a single system or a or a suite perhaps think of office productivity suites as, as an example or um, a, a, a larger form in terms of an operating system or an entire environment uh, perhaps even a, even a, a database or a collection of, of databases or a collection of applications that, that support a, a workflow or, or support a business process of some kind it can also include right down to your desktop level or maybe an app of some kind or some software that's been embedded, something that's controlling a machine or controlling a device, a piece of infrastructure perhaps, or maybe a website, some kind of automation application in there. And when we talk about software as well, we include developed in-house software, commercial off-the-shelf software, vendor software, partner software. So it's it, think in terms of software in the, in the widest sense. I'd also include, don't forget to, to think about the warranty and utility. When we talk about software, when we talk about software development, make sure the fit for purpose and the fit for use, um, your, your uh, warranty and, and utility is, is thought through. Broadly speaking, when we talk about software development and management, there's a number of activities that are included in there. So architecture, as an example. So perhaps we might want to think back to some of those general management practices, perhaps, and the architecture management piece. Solution design, CX, um, interfaces, the design, the development, testing as well. Remember, we've got all those different types of uh, um, validation and testing from the service management practices, but we, we, we've got unit testing, integration testing, um, security, maybe there's a compliance element or a regulatory requirement or, uh, you know, just standard security testing. Is it, is it going to pass the internal stand, uh, testing requirements or, or external uh, regulatory testing requirements or maybe any kind of UAT or business testing? Um, other activities that, that, will, that will be part of software development and, and management as a, as a practice includes the management of your repository, so a code repository. Maybe that's internal, maybe that's external. There'll be a library as well that, that needs to be there. Integrity of the artifacts, so important. Package creation for the effective and efficient deployment of your application. Version control, sharing day-to-day -day ongoing management of, of uh, uh, blocks of code. When we think about software development and, and management, there are a couple of 
approaches to to uh, to make this happen and one of them's waterfall and the other one's agile hopefully these terms are, are, are terms that you you've heard before but at a very high level waterfall as an approach it, it's sequential it's not very iterative or doesn't have a huge amount of flexibility in in there it flows in a particular direction well it's downwards it flows downwards uh, it's a very established phased structured uh, uh, progression activity it it had its roots in the manufacturing and the construction sectors originally so really uh, physical structured environments where if you followed a plan and you got it wrong it's going to cost you a lot of dollars to get that fixed the other approach is agile so uh, if you think about what does agile mean as a, as a word in itself it's about being able to uh, to respond quickly or respond to a change in your environment um, so you're able to create something and you're able to respond to to a change in in a in in a quick way it is an iterative approach to project management and to to development and the the benefit is around being able to deliver value early to customers instead of perhaps you might see in a in a waterfall approach that, that this this it's all in approach it, it's the big bang uh, launch if if you like and and let's just hope it was all thought through and it was right and and uh, um agile is very much you do a bit is that okay go back get feedback it's a high feedback in environment um so it delivers small increments but it goes back on a on a regular basis the the other just point around agile software development is don't see agile as it's just a framework so don't just think oh yeah agile that's extreme programming or feature driven development or it's scrum isn't it mm, well not quite but um, don't think it as a practice either. Don't don't think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I I know. Um, agile software development. It's um, it's about stand ups. It's about planning sessions. It's about sprints. It's about pair programming. It's test driven development. Again, yeah, but not quite. Think of agile software development as an umbrella. It, it's it's a set of all of those things so it's a set of frameworks it's a set of practices and it's based on values and principles that are in the manifesto so there's a, a manifesto for agile software development and um, there are principles that, that are behind that uh, that manifesto there's, there's 12 principles so broadly speaking software development and management you've got two approaches waterfall and you've got agile Software management's a really big, broad and wide practice. Software components are continually evaluated. There's a life cycle there that goes from the initial idea um, right through to the to, to the ongoing day-to-day -day support of that and, and management of that, and then the improvement activities that, that come with that. But then also eventually, like most things, there's a retirement point. So the life cycle will talk around design, we'll talk about development, testing, deploying it, operating it, and then eventually retiring. Finally, let's just very quickly talk around the service value chain. As a reminder, service value chain sits right in the center of the service value system. Service value system, you have your guiding principles, your governance, your service value chain right at the core, right at the center. The practices, you've got 34 of those practices. We're focusing on the technical management practices at the moment, but there's also service management practices. There's 17 of those. There's also general management practices where, where we've got 14 in there. But the, the service value chain, those activities, I like to remember uh, PIDOD as a way of, of remembering what those activities are. So it's planning, improving, engaging designing and transitioning obtaining building 
delivering and supporting, which all ends up with your product or your service that, that, uh, that's been delivered and that will create the value. So when we think about software development and, and management and service value chains, it's involved in all of the all of those activities apart from engage main areas of activity are around obtain and build those those are the the, the main sort of areas where where there's uh, uh, the majority of the uh, of the activity okay please subscribe thank you very much